this was an experiment. Holy moly. On heavier equipment, folks. This one's kind of strong. to see if we can get them on heavier equipment with hot, uh, with uh, uh, a bigger diameter line. So I'm using a 15 pound, 15 pound. <laughs> Fluorocarbon leader is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> This guy just ripped into it. This is a big fish because he was down deeper. But I've got better equipment to deal with bigger fish because it's heavier rod, heavier line. I can get them in with a little less stress on the fish. This is a good one. This is a good one and he ate that bait like he wanted it. Again, I can put more pressure on him with this rod get them in quicker that's more fishing too I catch more fish per per hour you hate the panorama and there's a ton of them down here too we're right over them this guy was down at least 50 feet he was, he was down deep He's got that panorama sticking out of his face. Uh, no, he's trying to get out of the boat on me. Come here, fish. Uh, not as big as the last one, but heavy. Uh, heavy, heavy. Just want to show you what they're what they're eating here. You know, this bite's been going on now for me for several weeks. And when it started, the bait was really small. But the last time I was out, they were busting the bait and I found one on the surface, half dead. And they're this size. In fact, they look just like this thing, same color and all. Take a look at this picture and take a look at that bait and you'll see what I'm talking about. So if you look at that picture on the left, the upper portion of the picture is a Damiki armor shad with a ball head jig, a Kitek jig. And then below it is a actual live alewife that was stunned by one of the stripers that was surface feeding. And then if you look at the right, you'll see the panorama. And that panorama, it, that particular color is called live gizzard shad. Well, that live gizzard shad, as you can see, remarkably resembles very closely resembles the actual alewife that was caught from the lake. I mean, you can't get, I don't think you can get much of a closer match than that. And so that was why I chose that bait and thought, well, I have to find out if these things work or not. And the funny thing about it is, <clears throat> is that just because the bait looks natural doesn't mean it'll necessarily work. This is a great example of that. Here's a bait that looks just like a crawfish. Take a look at this thing. Look at it from all angles. It's a basically a 3D crawfish. It's made by Huddleston. It's been around for a long time. And I have a hook through the tail here. You can't get a more realistic crawfish imitation than this. And there's a few others that are that are very close to this Huddleston. And yet, they don't seem to catch fish that well. I mean, sure, it'll catch fish. You, know, you can catch fish with it, put it on a jig head, drag it on the bottom, drop shot it, that kind of thing but it doesn't come close to other baits that mimic crayfish, like the sweet beaver or any of those other beaver style baits, or even the, the Zoom Ultra Vibe Speed Craw. I mean, those just catch a lot more fish than these. And I, and I often try to figure out why is that? And I think one of the reasons is fish are not always actively eating you know bass spend most of their day not actively pursuing prey most of their day is spent resting or doing other things and so i think what happens is when we're fishing some of those other baits they are more likely to invoke a reaction strike than something like this 
that's just a theory though. I really don't know the answer to that. Why you can have a bait that looks this natural and still not have it catch fish the way you'd expect it to. So it was because of that that I had to put this guy to the test. And that's what I was doing with those stripers. Now they were feeding, but they sure wanted this bait and, and they ate it good. They ate it hard and they, you know, it worked. So this is proof that fishing this thing on this jig head under certain circumstances can be maybe one of the best things you can throw out there. Now I'm gonna show you some other stripers we caught that same day. But before I do, I just wanna let you know, make sure you stay tuned because at the end of that portion of the video, I'm going to show you two other ways to rig these panoramas that could be dynamite. But let's show you the striper footage now. where they're not. This one's freaking pulling another heavy one. Forty feet. Really don't want to be caught.
<laughs> Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Love your content, man. Thanks. Don't mean to crowd you. Ah, no, that's all right. There's plenty here. that bait right where I wanted him. I think we're going to end it on that one. That's a long one. Nice stripe. Hey, if you're planning on going out there and trying this, I just like I gotta figure I have to let you know this because the bite has now changed. These fish that they were schooling like crazy in late August and all of September, and I've been out a few times in October, and it's not like it was. It's much more difficult. In fact, the last time I was out, we just couldn't even find them. There was no schooling activity that we could find anywhere, and we looked an awful lot. In fact, we were probably there for three hours and took two hours just looking. So I just wanted to let you know that the, the bite has shifted. There's, you know, it may, it may come back, but if you're watching this video and thinking you're going to be able to go out and duplicate what we did, uh, it's going to be different. It's going to be difficult. I mean, you can't find them and catch them, but uh, something's changed. They're not schooling the way they were. The bait is not where it has been. That's typical in the fall. Things are changing. We all know that. So just wanted to let you know that, that, uh, that the striper schooling behavior has changed. I'm not quite sure where they went. I think they've kind of dispersed and they're no longer schooled up the way they were. And they may be down more on the bottom as well. Doesn't mean you can't catch them. There's a lot of stripers in that lake as you saw in the other videos. It just means that the, that the pattern and the techniques that we we're using that were working uh, may require something different now. And I guess that's why they call it fishing and not catching. Okay, as promised, two other ways to rig a, a panorama that I really like. One is you, you take your panorama and you take one of these type of jigs with, that has the plastic lip on it that makes it roll back and forth and makes it vibrate quite a bit. 
and I like to take a lighter one. You can have different size heads. This is a lighter head, and the reason why I like a lighter one, and that's how it'll look when you put it in there, is because I like to fish this on the surface. I like to make it make a wake. So I'll throw it out there and I'll reel it fast where it wakes on the surface, and it looks really good. And, and I've caught some fish on it. I haven't done it a whole lot, but I did catch some fish on it, some pickerel and some bass doing that. Uh, next year, I hope to have more opportunity to wake one of these things with this particular head. What are these heads called? It's gonna bug me. Scrounger. With these scrounger type heads, you know, it could, and it could also be good under the water. I haven't experimented so much with that. I fished it mostly as a top water, but I wouldn't, uh, certainly wouldn't doubt that you can have this go down and have that vibration and stop, vibration and stop, let it sink, vibrate, let it sink, make it look like it's hurt. Probably works quite well. And then the other way that I really like to rig this and, and uh, experiment it with it, that I really enjoyed was I hook it like live bait, right? around the right in front of the dorsal fin on a hook and i showed this once before in another video and i showed how it looked and one of the one of my subscribers commented instead commented on that and said that i almost got it right that you should put a nail in the front and i did that here hopefully you can see that nail i put a long nail this nail goes all the way back to here on the body so now it makes it you know, where I can throw it a lot easier because this thing is light. You know, I throw it on BFS, but uh, with that nail in there, that, 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 that uh, I forget his name, unfortunately, but he commented and, and he was right. This thing really looks good under the water. Now it actually swims down there and uh, you can move it around and shake it. And this thing is going to catch fish. It looks like you're fishing live bait. Finally, I'll leave you with one last thing. One last modification that I like to do on this bait is I modify the tail because the tail of an actual alewife is much more of a Y like this one versus this one here. And it's so easy to do. All you do is just cut out a portion of that tail from both sides so that you have more of a V tail when it's all said and, and done. So we're just gonna cut that out. Now I've got my V and that's a lot more what they look like. A lot more, and, and they have that darker tail too. So this is already dark. If you want, you can paint it. You can take a marker and color that black to make it even more so. But man, this thing looks just like the real thing. And you can see in this video that it was very effective when fishing for stripers. Hey, if you like that video, and you'd like to see another video where I'm catching stripers on top waters, take a look at this one right here. And until next time, be safe out there. Hope to see you on the water. And as always, may God bless your fishing endeavors.